hi everyone. I'm happy you're here to see um, see the talk. Um, so let's 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 dive straight in. Um, so a few words about me. So I am a third year undergraduate student at Imperial College London. I got into Rust. Um, well, I. I Initially found out about Rust a couple of years ago, but I got more into it uh, earlier this year, and I decided to do a GSOC project um, working on adding language support um, in KDevelop for Rust. Um, so, yeah, so a bit about the project. So, um, the, main, the main sort of part of the project is um, a library that I that I did, um, which is essentially kind of takes information from from the Rust compiler, from lib syntax, and then um, presents it to presents it to KDevelop, where where I hooked up things and yeah, basically you'll you'll see a bit later like the the um, a few demos from from KDevelop. So. Why not use the Rust language server? So the Rust language server is, is pretty cool. Like it, it essentially um, summarizes all, all the important information um, from, from um, the Rust compiler, and it presents it to um, it, it presents it through the language server protocol. And this is great for editors like Visual Studio Code and Kate, for example. But um, specifically for KDevelop, I found that it might not be the best approach because um, essentially KDevelop expects a lot of internal structures to be, um, to be built um, and the KDevelop core code, uh, as in not, not the language plugin, but the core of KDevelop does a lot, a lot of things for you. Um, so things like semantic highlighting, um, renaming declarations, finding usages, that kind of thing, like that's all done for, uh, that's all done for you by KDevelop as long as the language plugin builds um, these internal data structures. So what is, uh, what is ASD Redux? So it's, it's a self-contained library, it's somewhat similar to libclang, if you've seen that, or um, cpython's ASC library. Um, it's, it's a bit lower level than RLS, so with RLS you would ask, ask the language server um, something like, oh, tell me all the declarations um, for this particular symbol, or tell me all, all the usages for this particular symbol, and RLS would give all those to you. Here it's more like, oh, here's a bunch of symbols, you figure out what to do. Um, it provides a view of the abstract syntax tree um, of, the, uh, of the code, and it, it sort of, uh, it, it exposes this as a C API, and it hides the details of working with lib syntax. Um, so yeah, at the moment it's using lib syntax as a um, sort of platform to build on. Um, in the future, I might, um, I'm looking into getting more information from the Rust compiler um, and uh, exposing that in a meaningful way as well. Um, so how does this interact with KDevelop? So KDevelop essentially expects um, these internal data structures to be built. The, these, these are called the declaration use chain. Um, essentially what, what happens is from KDevelop I pass to um, AST Redux the source code that it should parse and produce an AST for. Um, it does its thing and then KDevelop goes through the AST and populates its internal data structures. So, yeah, um, let's let's go on and see some of the things that you can do in KDevelop. So, like I said, uh, essentially what what happens is you go through the AST for each node. You figure out like if it's something like a function, a struct, um, an impl, 
or anything else. You build the corresponding data structure in kdevelop, and you're done. You get a lot of things for free at that point, so stuff like semantic highlighting, that's basically a single function call, and voila, kdevelop figures out the rest for you. So let there be color. Um, so yeah, renaming declarations or finding, finding usages, whatever you want, same thing. Like everything is basically done for you. Um, so let's see if this will work. Yeah. So renaming a declaration, that's also, um, it sort of just works out of the box. Um, with regards to building and debugging straight from the IDE, again, KDevelop has support for GDB and LLDB, so it was essentially a matter of um, getting those hooked up to work with Rust executables, and this as well works straight out of the box. You can, you can run your code directly from um, from kdevelop, so same thing. You can, you can add breakpoints, um, you can see all of, the, all, all of the variables, all their current values, um, step through the program, et cetera, et cetera, all the regular things you, you would wanna do when debugging. So yeah, um, code completion. So code completion currently works for local declarations. Um, I'm currently working on getting it set up for um, the standard, the Rust standard library. Um, so this is proving to be a bit more interesting because a lot of like in in the standard library, a lot of things are. Um, implemented with the help of macros, and expanding macros is an interesting process. Um, so yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work around that by um, sort of doing what a lot of other language plugins do, which is um, exposing, like b building essentially a, um, the, the full, or expanding the full source code of, of the standard library and then um, kdevelop can just parse that directly. Um, or, yeah, and in, in the future I'm looking to do the same thing for other libraries, so Cargo has this great thing which is it, it downloads the libraries, it checks them out from Git and um, you can essentially find all the metadata, all, all, all the information you need to um, um, wh where, where those libraries are checked out and um, how you can, um, like where you can find the source code. So you can go through that, parse, parse that, and uh, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking to do that in the future. And similarly for project management, um, at the moment, you can, you can create projects straight from um, kdevelop. Um, I'm looking in, in the future to expand, expand more support, like expand the support uh, for in, in cargo integrations. So the metadata that's provided by, um, by cargo for dependencies, for example, that can be, um, that can be parsed and um, the ID can then figure out um, how to um, like how to do code completion and stuff like that for um, any libraries you're using. So, yeah, I, I slightly rushed through through this presentation because, um, yeah, I figured that 
I had a bit less time, but uh, yeah, so for the future, like I mentioned, um, there's stuff like, um, there, there's a lot of stuff left to be done. Um, hopefully I've, I've tried to make the library part of, of this project, which is AST Redux, a bit more, um, a, a bit more agnostic, so it's not that tightly, um, that, it's not that um, sort of um, tightly integrated with KDevelop. It can be used in other projects as well. Um, so there's a lot of work that can be done there. Um, so things like um, building straight, straight like essentially using the Rust compiler to um, build and extract any errors that are um, that are found in the code um, and expose those. Um, there can be integration with RLS in the future. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. There's there's um, a lot, a lot that can be done in this in this regard. So yeah, um, I'd like to say thank you to the organizers of this conference, um, Carol especially for inviting me to give a talk, um, and everyone in the Rust community that was so helpful throughout um, my GSOC project and uh, was giving me lots of feedback, and um, my mentors at KDE as well. So thank, thank you, thank, thanks to everyone, um, and thank you all for, for listening. Um, so with that, I, uh, I, I just wanna say, if you wanna try out KDevelop, um, come and see me at some point today, and I can uh, explain how you can do that, because uh, at the moment, it's based on the current master, so building everything from scratch might be a bit um, not straightforward, so. Yeah, come and see me at any point. I'm happy to help. Um, yeah, so with that, are there any questions? Can you yeah. find the, the source for the, your ASTG anywhere? Uh, yeah, it's on GitHub. Um, I can give you the link. Yeah? yeah? So I want to say, first off, this looks really nice. Uh, the demo was very cool. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering about uh, two questions. Um, one is, since it's based on the syntax, and I know we've been uh, <laughs> making a few changes to the syntax uh, in the last few months. Have you been able to keep it up to date? Are you trying to keep it up to date? Like if I wanted to use it, besides having to build the master, uh, would that be possible? So, yeah, so at the moment I am trying to keep it up to date and the way I've set it up so that I can figure out when something breaks is I have a daily build on Travis set up. So if anything, breaks overnight, like I get an email instantly. Um, so I've been trying to keep up with those. It, there haven't been that many of those so far, so yeah. And uh, one last question, are you doing things like name resolution yourself in order to link up the local variables? So that's one thing that I'm trying to decide on how to do exactly because KDevelop does name resolution for you, um, but obviously if like if I want it to be sort of this agnostic library that can be used in other projects, then I would have to um, do name resolution within the Rust library. So um, at the moment I'm using KDevelop's um, features to do name resolution, but I'm looking into moving that over into, into AST Redux. Oh, uh, yeah, lip syntax. I'm guessing because it was sort of built um, at a point where Rust didn't really have the error handling features it does today. So lip syntax panics on quite a few things like um, unexpected tokens. So for example, if there's a backslash somewhere, then it just panics. So stuff like that I had to, um, try to work around that. So I do, at the moment, I do the same thing as, as the Rust compiler, which is 
Um, I spin it up in a new thread and wait to see what happens, basically. <laughs> I think that I, I quite appreciate it that KDevelop does a lot of these things for you. So I've worked with KDevelop in the past, so I, I sort of knew about this, and that's one of my main motivations of choosing to do it this way rather than using RLS, because um, the way that uh, the way that KDevelop sort of handles these these things behind the scenes, like if if I had decided to do it with RLS, then um, if I decided to work with RLS, I would essentially have had to re-implement all of those things, um, which, because KDevelop is kind of based on, like, it, it, it's kind of, it, it works with its own data structures, and at the same time, it's based on Kate, um, so things like the syntax highlighting is actually implemented in Kate, and KDevelop only says, okay, well, for these ranges, like do like do this sort of coloring or whatever, and yeah, like basically, if 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 I decided to use RLS, all that code would become obsolete. So everything would have to be re-implemented on top of the language server protocol. Um, so I, I think that would have been quite a bit more work. Yeah. You mentioned uh, having some sort of mentorship. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you get in touch with those mentors? Um, so, the Google Summer of Code program basically works like you submit a proposal, and if there's interest from the organization to do that, uh, to do that project, then they find mentors for you. Um, so, I was working with Kevin Funk, who uh, who works on the C++ plugin in KDevelop. Um, and yeah, like he, he basically helped me a bit through like um, getting this like set up and that kind of thing. Yeah? What would you be hoping to achieve by integrating RLS back in? Sorry? You said for future plans you would try to integrate RLS. What would you like to I guess stability because RLS is sort of actively developed by the Rust community. It has a lot of support from the core Rust developers as well. So essentially, if anything changes at any point, I expect that that change would also be reflected in RLS. So um, what I'm trying to do with, with the library is sort of to expose it um, to expose the AST at the moment as through a C API, uh, which is useful for something like KDevelop, but in the future it might also be useful to um, get like further information like analysis um, from the compiler and that kind of thing um, exposed as well. So like with, with RLS, I, I think it would be it would make it more stable, basically. Like, I wouldn't have to keep track of all these changes. Uh, yeah? With, with, would it be completely impossible to be able to port your, well, what your library does into RLS and have it operate over the uh, language service or extensions of the language service Um, I don't think it would be impossible. I, I think that would make the RLS a lot more useful for KDevelop, for example. Um, so, yeah, like, at the moment, uh, RLS sort of implements the language server protocol, which doesn't really um, have any options for exposing the abstract syntax tree, for example. Um, there are other similar protocols um, I I was pointed to one over the summer, but I, I I don't have it off the top of my head which like which language had that. Um, but there was a sort of similar language server um, 
type software which expose more, more information about the structure of the code to the IDE. So if RLS had a feature, feature, features like that, then it would be very useful for um, integrating with KDevelop, I think. You mentioned that KDevelop does things like name resolution. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that there's likely to be rules in Rust that KDevelop doesn't know about. It's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, would it be hard? Let's assume the RLS would be extended arbitrarily. Would it be hard to, um, if you did get, say, name resolution information from it, is, can you feed that also to KDevelop and say, okay, you don't have to resolve names. I can, I can tell you the answer right now. Uh, or does it not have that ability? Uh. Hmm. I I think it I, I think it should be possible to do that. So um, my my guess is at the moment yes it's possible, but I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. So uh, yeah. Yeah. You have any sense across like IEs and editors? Different platforms where the graphical debugging support is? Like, is it there's lots available or only on a, on a few different IDEs? Um, so, sorry, can you can you repeat? So, like outside of KDevelop, mm -hmm. other IDEs editors, do you know which which ones have support for graphically debugging Rust from the editor versus not? Um. I'm I'm not sure. I imagine IntelliJ would have that. Um, I haven't tried it recently, so I, I'm I'm not sure. But yeah, like, don't know. Sorry. I can answer mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Uh, IntelliJ, you cannot in IntelliJ itself. If you're using C Lion, mm -hmm. you can, and you can in VS Code via its LLDB mm -hmm. integration, and you can with some work in Atom via its GDB or mm -hmm. LLDB integration. Someone who's not me could probably speak to them. <laughs> <laughs> not to my knowledge, but that's the extent of my knowledge. <laughs>